Hey guys and welcome to this Train Sim TV video. Today we're going to be taking another look at the Train Driver 2 software. We're going to be doing basically a video of your first drive online. What, what do you need to do when you first get online with the game and sort of thing? A bit of a tutorial. Based on the feedback some of you gave in the original video, you wanted to see how you actually get online and I fully understand that because it was something I struggled with when I first started. So this is based on the fact that you've done a little bit in single player. Uh, we're going to do this tutorial using the EN57 EMU because it's basically the easiest train to drive. It's very simple. It's essentially stop and go. It's really simple to have a go at. So this is based on where the fact that you've done a little bit in single play. You've done maybe five miles. Just stop at the station, open your doors, setting off, putting your lamps on, learn how to change cabs, stuff like that. Very, very basic things. So once you've done that, you're ready to get into multiplayer. It's quite simple. It doesn't take a lot. You want to go into settings and you want to make sure that in the game screen you've done this stuff here, the basic stuff that, you know, this this didn't matter for me really. But uh, your main thing here is your nickname. Don't make that something like you know, a natural nickname. It has to be a driver number. So it doesn't matter what number you pick. You can pick any number. The, the thing that matters is the key digits. So the amount of digits that you have. If you're driving an express passenger train, you want to have four digits. Doesn't matter what the digits are, it could be nine 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 or whatever you want. It could be anything, it doesn't matter. If you're driving a stopping passenger or a regional passenger train like we are, you want five numbers. If you're driving a freight, you want six numbers. That's the basic philosophy behind what the nickname is in this screen. You need to make sure you've got the right amount of digits in your number. We are going to be doing a, a local passenger train, a stopping passenger train. And we want five digits. So that's just the number that I use. It doesn't mean anything. Um, you can obviously find real numbers if you want to, but they don't expect you to of anything like that. You just put what you want. Just make sure you've got the right number of digits. So we know we're going to be driving a local passenger. We've already set our driver number up there. It's just got five digits in it. Next up, we're going to press multiplayer. And we're going to press driver mode because we can't do dispatching at this stage and I've still not learned it anyway. Then we're sort of met with this screen, which obviously, as you can see, is pretty daunting. It's like, well, what's all this stuff here? What's an F7? What's a J9? What's an 0205 EZT? All this stuff. They're essentially signal numbers, all this stuff here, and there's different ones there and, st and various spawn points. Um, now, you can see there, there's 22 available sessions. Essentially, there's 22 stations that you could spawn at. And we'll go through all that in a minute, but each one of these great different grey boxes is a different station, and you can see from here... The number of people that are spawned there. You can see the name of the location. You can also see the experience of the dispatcher that is there. If you're spawning somewhere for the first time, I would recommend spend spawning somewhere quiet. For instance, somewhere where you've only got one or two people. You don't want to be spawning, for instance, at Suzumi, where he's already got three people. You want to be spawning um, somewhere pretty quiet. But you don't really want to spawn with somebody that's on experience one, because that means that they're very inexperienced to being a dispatcher. If you've got problems, they may not be able to help you as much as somebody that's more experienced. So try and find somewhere quiet to spawn for your first time. You might have to come back a couple of times and find somewhere. Once you've done it the first time, you'll get the sort of gist of it and you'll be able to spawn at other locations. So what we're doing is we're spawning with a uh, EM57, as I said. Now the consist list is up here at the top. So you've got all these different consists. You can also make your own, but I would leave that until you've learned exactly what to do, and I'll probably go through that again in a further video. So we've got our consist list up here. We want to drive an EN57, and we're going to drive this one, 33113 is the train number. You can then edit your consist and the stuff in it. You can do your new cold stats if you want, although it's not something I've messed with because they are quite complicated. So we're ready essentially to go into the game now. However... We need a couple of little bits of information still. We need to know exactly what our train number is, our analysis. And uh, when we get inside one of those sessions, the dispatcher will usually immediately ask, what is your analysis? So what is your analysis? Basically, it is like a head code in this country. It's so that the dispatcher, so the signalers know exactly what train's coming, what type of train it is, where, what speed it can go, all that sort of thing. You have to write these yourself. I'm going to delete that off and we'll rewrite it so I can explain it in a second. Now, I always have this here. Could I have time to replace my analysis? Is, and then I have the analysis. Uh, I have a template of these always set up so that I can sort of just quickly drop them in. Uh, usually what I'll do is I'll go into the server, I'll say hello, and then the dispatcher will usually give you a, a command to 
put your analysis in. If he doesn't, after I say 30 seconds, just drop it in there anyway, and they'll usually give you a timetable pretty quick. So what is our analysis? Well, we know it's an EM57 because that's the type of unit. The next bit is the way it gets a little bit more sort of complicated. So this common phrases list. Now I'll put this in the description. You can easily get all of this. This is quite easy, handy to just have on your screen because sometimes you'll get told, for instance, Wizard or Wizard or Stodge, which is stop and stuff like that. A lot of it's actually self-explanatory, but this is the important stuff to know. Now, why is this relevant to our analysis? Well, over here, this is why it's relevant to our analysis. The most commonly used ones are local train. So you've got Osobi. Um, you got fast train, which is Pospienzi. These are all murdered, by the way. Um, Express, which is Intercity. Well, that was easy. And Tawai, which is a good train. These are the ones that I've been using the most commonly. There obviously are others on there. So what exactly do these all mean? So Asobi is a local train. That's what we're doing. We're in multiple units. We're stopping at every station. Now, you don't write the full Asobi, but you can do if you want. They'll know what you mean. But you usually just do an abbreviation. So the abbreviation for Asobi is OSOB. That's what you're doing if you're doing a local passenger train. If we were a local hot passenger train, we'd either type express there or PSOP. The next thing you want to know is how heavy is your train because you need to add in how long your train is how heavy your train is and the maximum speed now you can click on the consist edit so there that little pencil i click and you can see length 65 meters weight 126 tons so all we need to do here is add 65 m 126 t that's the main basis of it next up we need our v max maximum speed the EM57 is limited to 110 kilometers an hour, so quite simple. Maximum speed, 110 kilometers an hour. So what we've got here is the Polish equivalent of a British head code uh, with the addition there of the train type. So we've got EM57. We have a local, uh, local passenger train. So we're stopping service, basically. So it's the equivalent of a class two in this country. Train length, train weight, maximum speed. This essentially gives the dispatcher an idea of what priority train service we are. And then all I'll do here is just copy that. And then I can just shut this document because I don't need it anymore. We can confirm our consist. And next up, we're looking for our spawn point. We are an OSOB service, as we've said. We're an OSOB. So we're looking for somewhere where we can spawn an OSOB. There's one there, look. So all we do now is we click OSOB. You can also click all, you can also click passenger, you know, various ones. Don't click, for instance, tau, because tau means freight. If you're driving a freight, yeah, go click it. But it's no use if you're driving a local passenger train. For a local passenger train as an EMU, you want to be going for OSOB or all or PAS. You don't want to be uh, going for tau and stuff like that, because you'll just get, basically, it's, you're spawning in the wrong place. Um, if you really wanted to, I think you can, but... You know, you want to spawn in the right places, really. So we're going to click up there. Look, that one's just appeared. Grab on me ourselves a good station. You can click OSOP and we'll spawn in the game. Right, so when I've spawned in, we're here waiting in the station yard. I've said hello there to the dispatcher. The dispatcher said hello to me. Next up, I'm going to give the dispatcher my um, analysis, the one that we copied down a couple of minutes ago. He said hello. He doesn't actually ask for the D, um, analysis. They usually do. You'll find some don't. If they don't, just give it a few seconds. Give them a chance to say analysis, please. If they don't, just get it sent. Be polite. You know, everything like that. If you want to ask, if you want to ask for a long timetable, ask for one. If they can, they will give you one, generally speaking. But, you you know, you find generally you don't actually get them. I've, I've got, like, three out of ten times asking, uh, where I've got, like, a three or four hour one. So what I'm doing here is I'm just checking the lights. I've just flicked on the front light right the front right lamp there. Now that one is on to signify that we're doing a shunt manoeuvre. You want your front right lamp on if you're doing a shunt manoeuvre. Um, and you want your back right one on as well for doing the same sort of manoeuvre. Then when you've got into the platform, what you want to be doing is you want to be changing. So you've got all three on the front and then reds on the back. That means you've got the right lamp set up going on. So as you can see, dispatch has given us road, it's told us to go to the platform. We've got that little white shunt signal down there. Now you can 
yeah, we're looking for that there to see that we've got clearance in the station. We've got the clearance, so now we can go into the platform and we're doing our shunt move. Just take it nice and steady. If uh, you're watching this and it is going to be your first time driving, don't be afraid to just drop in the chat. This is my first drive. Generally, when a dispatcher sees you've got the L tag, because you have a learner tag instead of where I've got level 4, you'll have an L. Generally, when the dispatchers see that, they obviously know to be patient with you because it might be your first go. But if you tell them that it is your first go, you know, you should be okay and they'll understand that you might make a few mistakes and they'll explain things to you. Um, sometimes when you're doing these shunt moves, you've got asked to change cabs and stuff like that. On this one, I didn't. We just went in this direction and carried on. But yeah, sometimes you will need to change ends and things like that. So we've got ourselves moving into the station. I'm not really going to talk that much more in this video because there's not much for me to say. Um, it's quite basic. Is when I arrive in the platform here, uh, it's a case of switching all three lamps on as I described. Just make sure all three lamps are on the front. You'll see me check by pressing F11 to get out. You'll see me check that they are actually on. And uh, then it's a case of opening the doors. You can do that with the full stop and comma keys. And uh, just enjoy the drive then i mean it's it's quite easy you've got the brakes with the plus and minus key uh but no but sorry the brakes on the three and the nine key on your number pad and the power is on the plus and the minus key on your number pad and this is a really basic unit to drive it is essentially you know four button operation you've got your reverser as well but that yeah you, know, you just flick it into forward and away you go it's really really nice to drive uh it's the braking, you, you get to take a bit to get used to, sort of like with the braking timing and stuff, but yeah, it's a nice unit to drive otherwise. And uh, you can see now, I'm just, as I said, I'm checking the, uh, checking the lights. I love the destination displays on these as well. They actually always say where you're going. So the, t the dispatcher will set your destination and then they already know what destination you're going to. It's not, not like a generic destination. It actually, is the right one, so that's quite cool. Uh, anyway. I'm not really going to say any more in this video, guys. I'm just going to let you enjoy watching it. I've cut it down quite a lot because it was over an hour. So the purpose of this was just to give you guys an idea of what happens in these simulations. And uh, my plan will be to probably stream a few of these drives over the time so you can sort of get a better gist of what's going on. Enjoy the video. Cheers, guys, as always.